Guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, first ever podcast today. So the idea being you can just listen. You can be pottering around your kitchen or whatever you do. Uh, you don't need to be watching. So uh, yeah, um, have a listen, see what you think. And um, yeah, please leave it a, uh, a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my first podcast. So, um, yeah, this is uh, the Master System Club podcast. So welcome, everybody. I hope that you um, enjoy what you hear. Joined by a special guest today, uh, James off of um, Sega Collect. So uh, say hi, James. Hello. Thank you for having <laughs> me on. Yeah, you're all right, buddy. Thank you ever so much for agreeing um, to, um, to chat with me. And yeah, the idea of the podcast is going to be something that you can, I suppose, perhaps more listen to as opposed to be a, a visual um, video. So it is going to be very much a podcast. Um, there's some games and stuff running that you guys can watch um, if you would like to. Um, but yeah, just me and James um, chatting for a little while. So, James, um, obviously, we've met each other. We've um, been talking um, for quite a long time. Um, with each other over the years as well, um, two fellow master system collectors. I really wanted to talk, I suppose, loosely around the price of collecting and how that's changed over the years. Um, but I thought probably a good place to start would be you telling us a little bit about yourself, um, why you got involved in collecting uh, in the first place and, and what you collect. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um... I'll, I'll just set the scene with like my gaming journey. So uh, my parents were both into gaming when I was a, when I was a kid. So and my earliest gaming memory was the VIC-20. And then soon after the ZX Spectrum. So I spent quite a lot of time on that. That was my parents' computer. Um, and then my first own sort of games console was the Sega Master System 2, which I got for Christmas in, I, th I think, 91. Um, got it with Alex Kid built in, and also got Castle of Illusion and Moonwalker. Um, so had that for many years until I got a Philips CDI. Um, and in order to afford a Philips CDI, because they were quite expensive back then, yeah, um, yeah, I'd sort of saved up Christmas birthday money and. Sold a few things, uh, including my Sega Master System. I no longer lived with my dad at that time, and he he bought that Master System off me, um, and that contributed to the money. So, fast forward to 2005, um, and one day he just called round and happened to bring the bag with the my Master System two in it and all the games, and said, Do "You want this?" I was like, "Wow, you know." That's amazing. Last from the past. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, I bet. And and coincidentally, around that time, I'd been sort of getting back into um, looking at old games and things. Um, I'd, 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 I'd sort of half considered collecting for the Atari Lynx at the time because that was something else I'd had back in the day. And I'd joined like Atari Age Forum and, and things and I was just looking around on there. Um, but then this Master System came along and, I, you know, that was it. I was, I was hooked back in, so I was playing that a lot, um, picked up a few games on uh, from Game Station, which was the shop back in the day that we used to get old games from before CEX was a thing, uh, at yeah. least around here, I'm not sure where that originated. Yeah. Um, and it was great because you could pick up so many um master system games for like one pound 99 buy one get one free that was always the offer the add-on that i remember um and you know you could go in there and come out with 20 games and the staff would look at you like you were crazy why is this buying all these old games totally different to today's market um, yeah wasn't seen as like well i don't know if it is now but it wasn't certainly wasn't a sort of trend or in any way popular like it is now i think um, yeah, it was just for probably us geeks back then rather than retro wasn't cool at that point was it yeah not at all not one bit like i remember some of the early gaming events that were happening they were pretty sort of quiet low-key things back back then 
Um, not nothing like sort of the popularity of Play Expo and things like that these days. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What was the original question? Of... Uh, no, I mean, I, I think you, you you pretty much um, nailed it um, in terms of just, I suppose, a bit about your your journey and how you got yeah, into Yeah, so that was uh, it. Sorry. Yeah. So I'd, I originally started just buying some games that I'd wanted back in the day. But as you know, back then, um, you know, £30 back in the early 90s was a lot of money. Um for a new game, yeah. so you didn't get that many. You know, waited round till Christmas and birthdays. There was always loads of games you fancied that you saw in magazines or on shop shop shelves. So when I, I found all this in Game Station, you know, I was picking up things I would have um, liked back in the day. You know, and before long, I had like 50 games on my shelf. Never really thinking it was going to be like a collection as such, but um, it just turned into one found some of the popular Sega forums, such as Sega 8-Bit, SMS Power, um, and just got really into it. Um, and within a couple of years, I, I think I had a full PAL set, probably less than two years. Yeah, I remember talking to um, Stu, Ninja Bear Hug. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, he, he um, I think he managed uh, a full set in a, about the same sort of time, but quite a few years ago, uh, and some of the some of the prices he paid for stuff. But back then, there were a lot they were a lot more readily available. Um, eBay was still quite new, so yeah, certainly. You, and you, um, you were literally you could get bargains, that, just junk that people didn't want. Yeah, you could get real bargains. Like I used to buy a lot of bundles on there at one point where. Often they didn't even have a photograph because um, back then I think you had to pay extra for a photograph on your listing. Um, and I'd get these large bundles turning up nearly every day. Um, a lot of the games I'd already have, but I would go through and check for any variants and things. And then that turned into a thing where I was keeping those. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it but just? I, I think every <laughs> all collectors probably do this anyway, but you'd go through and find the best manual, the best cover, the best cartridge, and then you'd try and make the most perfect version of each game, I guess. Yeah, and make it sell yeah. off or trade again. Yeah, what you didn't want. Um, so I did a lot of that, and it was quite funny when I first joined Sega Eight Bit Forum. Um, I noticed a few posts talking about my eBay activity. Nobody knew me at the at the time but there was already who's this guy buying not i keep seeing this same ebay because back then the ebay usernames as well were visible wasn't you all. Could, i remember yeah you could see who had outbid who couldn't you yeah so my name was popping up on the forum as somebody keep buying all the all the stuff <laughs> which is funny that's brilliant <laughs> that's brilliant when you so when you um around 2005 then you'd had your master system uh, and you're a part of your childhood handed back to you. Um, how many, how many games had you passed over to your dad for him to sort of pass over back to you? What what was in the bag? Yeah, I think there was about ten or twelve. It's a long time ago now to recall exactly, but I yeah, think yeah. it was about ten or twelve from memory. Could have been more than that actually, because I'm pretty sure I had more games than that. Um, as a kid, I had all three Codemasters games. Codemasters right. was um, quite popular in our family because my parents obviously had, like I said before, the Spectrum, um, and they loved playing the Dizzy games and the other Codemasters games. So yeah, um, I think they saw that as a sort of seal of quality, the Codemasters brand, so they'd bought me those. Um, yeah, yeah. And who doesn't like Micro Machines? Yeah, well, it's still brilliant to this day. I know when we have our Sega 8 bit annual meetups, that's a favourite to uh, on yeah. multiplayer. Um, yeah, but I loved, to be honest, I did like Dizzy, not quite as much as the Spectrum ones. Um, and Cosmic Spacehead, I've enjoyed. I've, I've played again recently, actually. It holds up. I, I know it, uh, it's got mixed reviews, but I, I actually quite enjoy that game. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of nostalgia for you each time you um, 
put it on, I would think, as well. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, one of the other games I got back was Put and Putter, which has always been one of the most favourite games. Um, it is a particular. A game. Yeah, it was particular quite one. As well. Yeah, I think a lot. It's a bit of a hidden gem because um, it's not on ev- most people's top tens. Don't include that, but it's certainly on mine. Um, but the one that I'd got back was the one. So I'd I'd used to rent it from the local independent video shop that was just walking distance around the corner. I must have rented it about six or seven times. Um, and then one day, probably where they were getting newer things in, they were selling off the Master System games, some of them. And, and I remember getting it out the bargain bin. I think I paid about £7. And it still got the rental stickers on. So that's the one in my collection is that one that I'd rented all those years back. So that's quite nice to to have. What, the putt and putter? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Have you got that the, the actual copy still in your collection? Yeah, that's the one with the rental stickers on. And yeah, I actually nice. added to it the other year because uh, my grandma was moving house and I helped her clear out the attic. And one of the things I found was her video rental card for that same shop that closed down years ago. Oh, wow. So, although it's not my rental card, it's got her name on. I've put that in, you know, with the game. Yeah. it's a bit of the history from it. Yeah. I'm that a shop's a, long gone. I'm a bit of a sucker for doing the same and keeping all of my receipts and um, stuff like that. Yeah, so. I love that when you get an old game off eBay or, or from wherever and it's got the original sales receipt. Yeah. That's that's brilliant when, when you find those. Yeah, absolutely. I've got quite a few with like um, you know Dixon's or so or, or some independent um, game. You know, might might be on like a market somewhere that obviously isn't, yeah, yeah. market stalls aren't going to be there anymore. But yeah, uh, and some of them are handwritten. I love all of that. It's brilliant. Yeah, it adds to it definitely. Yeah. So when you um, so when you then had this bag of games, what, what were the first sort of few you then bought to get you to, to that sort of roundabout figure of 50? What sort of games were you buying? Was it games that you thought, do you know what? I've always wondered about this or I always wanted that one as a kid. So I'm going to get that. Yeah, it was a bit of a mix really. I was, I've always been into my platformers. So yeah. Um, I mean, some of this is, is from memory cause it's quite a long time ago now. Yeah, yeah, I don't just have, this, buddy. <laughs> None yeah, of I don't have the. I didn't <laughs> keep a note back then, and I've got very few photos of, of that original collection because back then camera phones quite weren't quite what they were now, so um, yeah, we didn't tend to take as much. So, um, definitely, Land of Illusion was one I remember because um, that surprised me. I, as a kid, I did rent it once, and I never right. got along with it because I was a huge fan of Castle Illusion, one of the first games I got. Yeah, high yeah. hopes for Land of Illusion, and I just it just didn't click with me. But I didn't. It is a bit different, enough, isn't it? And you've I didn't got spend to enough time with the levels, haven't you? Yeah, because when I went back to it, it's brilliant. It, it's an excellent game. I just just at the time it hadn't clicked, so that was one of the first ones. Um, Sonic One as well. I had Sonic Two and Chaos, but I didn't have the original Sonic. So right, that okay, one that okay. Um, I'm struggling probably to remember a few of the others. <laughs> That's I think, all right. <laughs> I think I bought back some because there used to be a, a shop nearby in the next town along that you could trade games in, like a like a CEX style shop, but independent again, that I used to go to. And I do remember once taking about 10 or 15 Master System games and trading them for four Atari Lynx games, probably one of the most stupid decisions I ever made. <laughs> Um, but at the time, you know, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I was only a kid. Um, so I, I think I bought back a few of those, which I missed, like uh, Action Fighter and Wonder Boy 3, things like that. Right, okay. Okay. And then you... So as as you got more involved with the Master System community, and on the... You know, back then, the forums were sort of everything really weren't they social media isn't quite what it is today yeah nowhere close um it was all about the forums back then um, yeah and i do remember people sort of 
at one point making murmurs that, oh, there's these Facebook groups that are taking over and everyone's like, no, it won't, won't take, you know, the forum's the place. But as you know now, it's, it's not dead, but it's very quiet compared to what it used to be. Yeah, um, it is, yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously, as you know, Facebook groups, I mean, I don't really get involved with Facebook much, to be honest. Um, but they're, they're quite active. There's quite a lot of groups and they're very active. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just how things have evolved, I suppose. In, in a way, it's quite nice that the forums are kept busy with a lot of the development and um, homebrew side of things. Um, and I do quite, I, I do quite enjoy going in a couple of times a week just to see if anyone's posted anything new or if there's anything. It's quite exciting, really, isn't it, to find, to see what somebody's made, to see, to find a new game, perhaps to try. Yeah, so definitely. I've, I've enjoyed sort of it, it's because I think once I'd got my full set um, and I'd got all the exclusives from other regions and things. Yeah, I can keep buying some of the regional variants, but it kind of goes on forever, to be honest. And and with the prices of what they are, it's especially like postage and and often getting stung with other fees when you're bringing things in from other countries. Yeah. It's really put me off, like, carrying on with that collection. Because there's, there's a f quite a few US games I've not got. I've got all the exclusives, but I've not just got the US version of a game that's been released in other regions. But I've kind of new labels and stuff, you mean? Y yeah, well, just any, um, right, any okay. US versions. I've just not got them all. Um, but it, it's just the price has put me off lately. But yeah. the fact that some um, homebrew creators have been releasing physical versions of their offering is, has been great because it's kind of something to collect again, if you will. I'd got to a point where I pretty much collected every single physically released homebrew uh, up until about a year ago, and then I've, I've ended up missing a couple. So that's put me off that now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I know. I'll still pick some up, but it's I hadn't, I've kind of, now I've missed a few. I can't have a full a full set of those, so it's kind of took the pressure off, really, because I just think, oh, well, I've missed a few now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I suppose in some ways you can just pick the ones up that you really want that's now. That's it. That's exactly save a few it. quid yeah. on the ones you that can, you're not bothered about. I don't know whether it's like a mental thing with collectors, like you've got to get the, you know, you've got to get them all sort of thing. And oh, it definitely I, is for me anyway. You can get yourself um, it's a slippery into, slope. If you can get yourself into that headspace of it doesn't actually matter and there's no rush, it's a much yeah. happier place. Uh, I find. Yeah, yeah, I'd be inclined to agree. So with the prices, um, like with anything, with inflation, you know, where there's a scarcity of certain titles, the price has steadily been creeping up yeah. probably since the early 2000s. But when, when did you really notice prices creeping up in a way that you thought, blimey, I'm not sure I'd want to pay that now? Yeah, it's it's within the last 10 years. I can't remember exactly when, um, but just shocked at some of the prices. There used to be a thread. Well, there still is, but it's not very active now. There was a thread on Say Great Bit where... I know the one. I it was like crazy one. prices or something thread where people yeah. just... If you spot something had sold on eBay at much higher than the usual market value, you would just anecdotally pop it on there for, you know, because it created conversation. Um, but but that you know just started to get stupid because uh, you know things that you were paying thirty pounds for fifteen years ago, you, they were suddenly a hundred pounds. You know, there's always been the few big hitters that have had a high price, but like championship hockey was always over a hundred pounds. But what is it now? I think. I'm kind of losing touch with what current market values are. What what's Championship hockey selling for now? Um, I mean, it's I hundreds. It wouldn't surprise me if copies in the last certainly this year uh, have probably reached 
four five hundred quid. Yeah, that's that's you know in and my I'm mind sure I've seen it on for hire. Whether it's yeah, sold it's, price. it's crazy. Like from what I'm you know what I'm used to, that was always a big hitter. But that's just huge money. Um, Going back to Ninja Bear Hug Stew, I remember Stew picked his copy up for three quid. On yeah, I, yeah. I remember seeing that on one of his very early YouTube videos. Um, that he was showing around his loft. He's sold up now, of course, but um, I remember him showing what he had bought and yeah, but it, he was, was possible back Game then. Boys from charity shops for a couple of quid and stuff. <clears throat> well, not not only were things cheaper. I mean, there was the big hitters that that went for a lot of money, but it was more possible to get those at bargain prices if you were patient. Yeah. So I do recall not everybody um, knew what they were, and there were there were fewer people collecting them. So there was more to go around, I guess. I certainly remember with my championship hockey where that came from. I'd seen a locally listed eBay auction for a large bundle of Master System games and a Master System. The photo, there was just one photo of the box of stuff, which you couldn't really properly see everything that was in it. They hadn't really listed the games. It was just sort of, here's the box of stuff we're selling. And it was mm. quite cheaply priced. Might have been thirty or forty pound for a box full of thirty games, maybe, which was about right back then. But I could see in the photo one of the boxes. It looked like possibly a box without a covering, you know, black. Right. I could just and make out a bit of writing. I thought I've got a championship hockey. Um. So when I went to collect because I collected it because it was local. Straight away, I saw, right, well, that's got championship hockey in that. You know, they've poorly listed it for the quite a cheap price. and um, So I can't really say exactly what I paid for it, but it was in a, because it was in a big bundle. But I think yeah. the bundle would have been less than, say, £50. That's quite a nice um, story. But that was like, um, nice yeah, thing. these days that would be, absolutely incredible but back then it was a more common thing people were just selling big bundles it's like probably somebody selling a ps2 bundle now you know in yeah. time frame wise or ps3 probably even yeah yeah you pick them up in charity shops they can't give them away almost can they yeah that's it it's, it's if you think in the timeline of things when you go in a charity shop now and see xbox and ps3 games but i suppose with the popularity of old games even that isn't quite the same as what it used to be yeah but master I, system I, games you what you regularly found them on car boot sales charity shops these days i cannot remember the last time i saw a master system game in a charity shop it just doesn't happen i think you get um locals or regulars i'm pretty certain this happens going in saying if you get any old games in can you put them to one side for me Oh, yeah, I've heard of collectors having, you know, a, a certain arrangement. Yeah, um, it definitely happens. I've never done that, actually. I, I don't yeah. not condone it. You know, it's fair play to them. That's what I just hope they're not just reselling it all uh, at the expense of the charity. But, that, you know, unfortunately, is the way. Yeah, I remember speaking to one collector um, last year. And he had, had told me um, up here in the northwest that he he knew other people that were, I suppose, what's the word, volunteering their time to charity shops. But they were just volunteering 15, 20, 30 minutes in each one, sifting through what they had, going through any games that they wanted. And then they were straight in the car and on to the next one. Um, volunteering a little bit of time just bit so they could sift through what had come in. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's really them, difficult it? to comment on, isn't it? Because, yeah, I mean, some of your listeners <laughs> might do that. You don't want to... Um, no, no, that's it. You know, It's look, just it's a tricky one, isn't it? If, if that's is. working for them and their conscious doesn't I, I would mind that, you know, it's... <laughs> I could understand volunteering your time so that you can say to them, this is actually worth more than the other games you're putting on the shelf. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it off you at a cheaper than retail price. So at least they're winning a little bit. Everybody's happy. 
But I guess if they're just not saying anything and taking them at whatever price they were going to, a pound a game, whatever they're going to yeah. put, that's a little bit, I don't I do know, remember it doesn't a... sit well with me that, but, yeah. you know, it's tricky, isn't it? It is. I remember, I remember a lad um, messaging me through Twitter, a, a guy that I you know talked to a little bit, and he's a collector, and somebody had got in touch, I think, with his missus, and left a pile of games, including some Master System games. Um, and one of them was um, Championship Hockey. And this was only, I think this was this year, in fact. So um, it might have been last year. My memory's a bit hazy. But he said, oh, just, you know, give us a few quid for them. You're fine. Um, but he was good enough to say, no, I've checked with, I've actually checked with the guy, being me. Um, and this one's worth a bit more. So I'm, I'm going to give this one back to you. Stick it on eBay yourself because it's actually worth a bit. Yeah. So Do you know, quite, in hindsight, quite I, honest about it. my story earlier about getting championship hockey in that bundle back then, I mean, prices aren't what they are now. Um, no. So back then it wasn't quite the same, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I could have probably been more honest and said that one's worth more. But it's not quite the same as... It's not the same. Taking no. them out it's of charity's to... hands, I guess. I don't know. You, it swings you... and roundabouts. That's why it's a tricky one, I think. I you think you go had on, every you... chance for somebody back then to say, do you know what? Just take them. It's just junk. Whereas yeah, these you, days... You can debate it for hours. Realize, um, with, you know, what's the, right. There's money in it. Yeah. So, But back then, there just there wasn't the money involved or, or attached to it. Um, you know, so... So when you've... Um, moving on then. So when you've then really embedded yourself in the community and you've really started collecting all sorts of curiosities and oddities and um, what was the first time and what, what what did you buy when you thought do you know what I'm that's quite a lot of money but I really want that um, I've got to have it in the collection so money's not really quite so important and you've maybe pushed yourself out of your comfort zone to think, you know, I've got to have it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, it's probably t- two... A few things, yeah. So there, there was one occasion early on where there was another collector selling up. Okay. Um, and he'd contacted me because we, we talked a lot on, on the forum. So he was yeah messaging me on the forum, offering me things before he put them on eBay. And um, I probably spent, well, it was many hundreds of pounds um, with him on on stuff. But what I was getting, you know, was was bargains, to be honest. Um, you know, I'm not going to list it all now, but there was no, a, no. a lot of the nice things in my collections came from those deals, which now looking back were ridiculous bargains. But at the time, it was probably just a bit, less than what he would have got on eBay. So for him, it worked well. Much like in our, you know, we have our WhatsApp group with Kevin and he's offering things there that he he probably would get more on eBay, but he's not having the hassle and he's dealing with friends, you know. So it was a similar similar thing. Um, So I did probably spend a bit more than I would have liked, but not looking back, I'm glad about that. But more recently, there has been a couple of things where I've definitely gone out of my comfort zone price wise because I've always been one for trying to get a bargain so um, Smurfs 2 um, I did have one already in my collection but it was missing the manual um, and it was one from the Czech Republic that I'd got in a, a deal um, oh, so, okay. so it wasn't the Halifax one then no so you know I'm assuming your listeners know the background to this, but they might not. But the original Smurfs 2s that became known about, which were in 2001, um, all seemed to come from the Czech Republic um, and in various sort of condition, used condition, um, quite cheaply often. But then I guess if they hit eBay, then they weren't cheap. Um, And then much more recently... Um, new old stock emerged from Italy with Halifax, which was the Sega distributor for Italy for some time, with Halifax stickers on, um, all in brand new, pristine condition. They get 
trickled out one by one by the same seller. So I always had this used one missing the manual and poster. I was kind of happy, satisfied I had it because I got it quite cheap. But it, it was kind of in the back of my mind, you know, I would love one of these nice shiny ones. So when COVID came along, um, I got rid of a car, which had been, was, you know, some silly BMW that was costing me a lot of money. Um, got rid of that because I didn't need it. I was working from home constantly. Okay. Um, so I had more, you know, spare cash. And I thought, right, here's the time. I'm going to get one of those um, Smurfs 2s off eBay. And I think I got it, you know, looking back, because his prices have gone up, I think I paid about 270 or 280 and there wasn't the um, all the extra customs fees that are getting piled on now as well. So I escaped that. So I think I did pretty well with that looking back. But at the time, I was like, that is the most I'd ever paid for a single game. Yeah, I think that's about what By I... By a long <laughs> shot. The, the, the dearest before that had been Mahjong, which I think was around the 150, 170 mark. Um, and the dearest before that was around about £100. So, you know, to, to spend close to 300 was hugely out of my comfort zone. Um, Your copy of Mahjong, um, because there's a... I don't know much about it. I know Kev knows more, but um, and I'm sure you do as well. But there are a couple of different variants, aren't there? Can you tell me any more about that? Yeah, there's two. There's Mac and Ma. Um I think one slightly rarer than the other, and from my understanding is, it, I could be wrong here, but I think it was a bit of a translation mishap, so right. one's probably sort of a reprint. The cartridge itself, I mean, this is all a bit from memory now, but I think the cartridges are all the same, it's just the cover and the manual that's Mar and Mac. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, one's a bit, I can't remember now which is which, which one's rarer than the other, but one's a, a bit more scarce than the other. The, it's not just the title, the cover's a bit different as well, like the picture of the Mahjong pieces or tiles. Yeah, I remember it's like a light blue in colour, and I had, I've had i had the chance to... And one of them, it, I've had it, the, chance the to picture goes it. all the way to the bottom and covers yeah. the, you know, where the Sega logo is, and on the other one it's sort of... It's quite pri I, I imagine they're both quite pricey as each other, aren't they? Yeah, it goes for a lot of money these days. Well, it was a Hong Kong release, which is unusual in itself. Um, so it's a Western sort of format cartridge, not like a Japanese yeah. format. Um, and it's it's just unusual looking. It doesn't really look like um, any other game, and it's quite rare, so... Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I did, I got that as a cartridge only originally. I think it was from that guy I mentioned earlier who had, had done a lot of deals with on the forum. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I might have only paid sort of 40 or 50 pounds for the cartridge only. And then many years later, um, some a different person on the forum contacted me to say they were aware I just had the cartridge and. They just have a loose manual and box because they were selling things at the time. They, you know, similar before they put it on eBay, they offered it me. Um, so I thought, well, that's not going to happen very often, is it? Um, to get no, the, to get but the, at the time that would have been that would have been a, probably a fair price at the time, wouldn't it? I wouldn't. Yeah, definitely. You, that that you loose pay, cartridge. You might pay ten that, times that now. Yeah, I think the. The box and the manual I bought off the other guy was just over a hundred um, posted, which was coming from another country. I can't remember now where I got it from, but um, that at the time, you know, was a bit of a worry in the back of my mind. I was spending a lot on that, you know, just for a cartridge and uh, sorry, just for the manual and the box. But in yeah. hindsight, now I see what they're settling for as a complete thing. It was a bargain. And you also um, bought. Um... I know you've got a copy of, um, I'm trying to remember the name, the boxing one. Oh, James you know, Buster Douglas. The, the American boxing one, that's it. And I remember you telling me the story um, 
earlier in the year, which I love. Could you tell the story again? Yeah, sure. So um, back in the times of Game Station, um, where I lived, there was a lot of different Game Stations in, in easy reach. Um, so I'd travel around to the different ones um, and, and pick up what I could find Master System-wise because you'd often go back like a couple of weeks after to a different branch and they'd, they'd have you know things that weren't in the week before. Much like yeah. you see in CEX now. So um, I used to do that a lot. And the most local one to me, um, which was sort of five miles down the road, um, I'd, I'd only been in it a couple of days before. So I just happened to be in that town again for other reasons. And I was walking past and I, and I said, um, I think it was with, I can't remember if it was with the missus or not, but I remember thinking, you know, oh, I'm not bothering, not bothering going in. It was only in the other day. And then for, I just thought, I'll go in, you never know. you know. So I went in, had a look, and from across the other end of the shop, it caught my eye, you know, the spine of the the box. I was like, James right. James Mr. Douglas. Yeah, you were yeah, I thought that, mile, that, you? I recognised that. You know, surely that's, surely to God, that's not what I think it is. Um, so I, I got closer and it was there. I was like, no, no way, you know. Um, you know, this is obviously going to be because it was expensive back then. To be honest, that was a known rare title. Um, although you know it was a US game, so strange to see it in the UK anyway. Um, so picked it up, and sure enough, it was in the one ninety nine buy one get one free offer. I was like, well, this is insane. The first thing that crossed my mind was, well. They're going to know I'm going to get to the till and they're going to be like, no, that, this is a mistake. You're not having it. You know, that kind of conversation. So I, d I do remember, and it's stupid looking back, but I remember picking up about three other games thinking, well, if I pick up a bundle, take away a bit of attention from it, play daft, you know, make out there's nothing strange going on. But I do remember because like in a lot of the shops, they'd keep the manuals uh, it wasn't like a glass cabinet situation like CEX. They were just freely on the shelf for you to browse through. But I remember yeah. some game stations would just have the manuals in the box so you could check condition. They usually always had the cartridges behind the counter, but quite often the manuals would be in the box. But some shops, they didn't. They put the manual on the cartridge. I don't know if you remember this, in like the drawers behind the counter. Um, yeah. So in this instance, I opened it and it was empty and I was like, oh, I hope they've got the manual, you know. But unfortunately, it didn't didn't have the manual. And I remember saying to them, oh, could you just... I think I said, I think I lied. I think I said, oh, you know, I have got this, but, you know, I, don't, I could do with one with the manual. And I just wanted them to double, triple check, you know, as it got the manual, but it didn't. Yeah, you would do, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, how much did that loose manual sell for not long ago? It was hundreds, wasn't it? Um, yeah, what well, wasn't uh, one of the French guys? I think one of the French guys was looking at it, wasn't he? In the yeah, group, yeah, it was it was crazy money because um, we, we were wondering whether it was genuine. I think because it's yeah. really unusual, you know, to see such. You a always got game. to look at the staple holes, haven't you? Like, yeah, it's just. Staple? I could imagine in this day and age, it's not that tricky to make a good copy of that, really. Um, so you've got to be very wary um, when it's so much money. Um, yeah, so. So I've still got it without the manual, but I'm 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 just I'm happy with that. I paid a pound. Well, it was one ninety nine. Buy one get one free. So that's never going to happen again. Um, I love that just, story. Yeah, I, I, and, I just, and you'd pay, you'd certainly pay that for it, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, just I remember the huge adrenaline buzz from from that yeah. sort of discovery. Like it was amazing. Um, and then very strange as well in that same small town. Um, they had it wasn't cash converters it's some, something else but a similar similar type of thing can't quite yeah. remember the name now it's still there but it's not cash converters and or cash generator for that matter but it's something like that something like that yeah yeah one of those type of shops they, I, I, I sometimes go in there because they occasionally have um, older stuff I had a flick through and they had a few Master System games. And and this is only a few years ago. I found a blooming UPC Sonic in there for 14 wow. 
Wow, that's so, awesome. That you know, in the same small town, the two rarest US um, games. So that's that's very strange. I mean, whether they originated from the same person, I mean, that's probably a stretch. But it's just odd, isn't it? That I guess yeah. I guess in one way that's my most the place I've looked the most. So maybe that's all it is. But you know, if yeah. You, keep going back to the same places constantly well it's like with anything isn't it if you're wanting to buy or collect anything if you put the the time in the hours in to go hunting um then you know you've got a much better chance of getting a bargain or getting something yeah, that you're after. car boot sales used always, to be like that didn't they yeah car definitely boots, i can't stand it hit and miss now i hate it i just don't enjoy it at all these days um I, there's too much of a. Do you know how much that is on eBay kind of mentality? Well, put it on eBay then. Why you, you know, what are you doing there? It just the I whole. Could get it on eBay. Me. I would. I'd. I'd stay in my house. I'd stay nice and warm. I wouldn't yeah. be in the middle of the field talking to you, would I? <laughs> yeah, it's just. I don't know. And then I know that there's people who go at sort of five in the morning and stand next to people's car they've not even unpacked um asking if they've got any games just i can't be bothered with all that just i know it, it probably does pay you know to to do have that attitude and get out there and try and get the bargain but it's just not for me yeah um but you know no, fair play to people who do it if you if it works for you you know i'm not knocking it if that's working but it's just not for me no i i i um I suppose it's different if you've got that motivation to collect a full set for anything, whether it be yeah. Master System, whatever, and you've, you're still on your journey, um, then that's great. Yeah, um, I used to really enjoy the hunt of tracking down all the Oh, games. it's brilliant, isn't it? Um, I still, regardless I still of the rarity, now. you know, just, yeah. just trying to find each game. But it was more, I just found it quite enjoyable back then, I guess. These days, people have got the retro market, so it is still achievable to do it offline, if that makes sense. You know, without eBay, yeah. you can go to the markets. They're not, you know, people do moan that the high prices, but they're not all high prices. You can shop around and get good deals still in those markets. And you've got the added bonus that you've got it in your hand, you know, for checking condition. Because so yeah. many eBay auctions, you can't quite tell till you've got it if it's as good and if you if you're a stickler for condition it can be probably quite disheartening to have paid out and got it and it's not quite how you thought well i think also there's a lot of what you said in terms of um adrenaline when you're actually there and you find the bargain and it's in your hands so i had a situation um was it last year or the year before where um, I was in a, a shop that's not that far from me, uh, and I know the owner, a really nice guy, and he knew what he had. He knew he knew what exactly what it was. Um, where he it mentioned to me, oh, I've actually got one for my own collection, but I have another uh, Lucky Dime Caper limited um, edition. Would you be interested? And I I couldn't believe it. I thought, okay, you know, he's a a shop owner, he knows what it is. He's probably going to want a fair chunk for it. Right. Um, but when we got talking, um, and we agreed a price, which I won't, I won't say what I um, what I paid because I, I promised I, I never would. Um, but it was, it was a gentleman's price, and I, I swapped a few, um, a few other games that um, that I just didn't play. PlayStation games, I think they were. Um, and I, I, pay, I put some money towards it as well. And then when I came out, I was almost shaking, you know, um, absolutely amazing. When, so you've got a, a, a Lucky Dime Caper um, limited edition yeah. um, set as well. Um, how, how long ago did you get yours? How did you come across yours? So I think it, it was around probably 2006 or seven. Uh, I actually got it from another collector off the Sega 8-bit forum um, so that you, in fact you'll you'll know who it is you know um, Digger Chan the homebrew game yeah so there was two guys who 
partnered on that, and and one of them, um, Paul, it was his. I bought it from him. Right, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that, and, and looking back, I think I paid like a fair price, but now yeah. it, it's insanely cheap compared to current prices. But I yeah. just, it was kind of the going amount at the time, so you know it was a fair thing. There was nothing. You know, I didn't lowball him. The guy knows exactly what it's worth. He, he'd been collecting longer than me. I remember someone telling me about a um, a company that had got hold of a few when they were selling them all off. Yeah, Telegames. Um, quite so, a lot. Telegames, that's yeah. it. That's the one. Yeah, I mean, I missed the, missed the boat there. That was a little bit before I started collecting, I think. So it would have been pre-2005. So they yeah. had a lot of new old stock. Um, they all had cellophane around them with some like plastic strapping. Because um, I've, I've got um, Comic Zone for the Mega Drive with the same packaging that was from Telegames, new old stock. Um, and they were selling them off. For, I can't remember now if it was 10 or £15 pounds each. Bearing in mind this is early 2000s where nobody's interested. You know, mm. so it's much like if Funstock had some old PS3 thing they were selling off or it's like an equivalent, you know, people wouldn't be interested. Fast forward 20 years and you'd probably look back and think that was crazy. So it's yeah. a similar thing at the time, you know. They, they were there. I, I, do you know, though, there was a lot of collectors who got those, but I can't recall the last time I ever saw a photo of a sealed one. There were, there were certainly photos online at the time, but recently, I don't I don't know any collector that has one of those still sealed. I think there are a lot of the the old guard, so to speak, that yeah, might probably not, even not have their collections media, even on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and they're just they're not forgotten, but there are a lot of people out there with really nice collections that yeah, there definitely is. None of us really know about. Yeah, okay, um, so we're just sort of finishing up now, buddy. Um, we've been going on a, a fair while. I, I could chat to you for hours, absolutely hours. Um, but I did have one question I wanted to hit you with, uh, just, I suppose, generally, really. Um, do you have any tips or advice for somebody new to retro game collecting? Yeah, um... So just, just be um, patient, I would say, is a big one. Um, there's no rush in this. I think I see sort of people rushing and they pay too much. And I, and I just feel as though if you just took your time and um, I, guess, I guess there's a bit of a, a double-edged thing there, though, because not everybody has the time. Um, I know I used to, back in the day, spend a long time browsing eBay, trying to get a bargain. Um, That's fun, isn't it? <laughs> but Thrill of the chase. not everybody has the time, I guess. Yeah. So, But I would just say one thing is, there isn't a rush to, to get that. If you're going for a full set, you know, just take your time and enjoy it. And if you wait, you will, you will get things at more reasonable prices, I, I believe. Um, and try to get things complete first time round, because I think people do that as well, though. In the rush to get the full set, they'll pick up a lot of games with missing manuals, but then you, I know from experience you want to go back and buy it again. Yeah. Unless yes, you find I, things... I've, I've got about 20 manuals to find myself, so... Yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> if you're finding things really cheap or out in the wild, that's different, you know. You would, you know, definitely buy those. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I used to buy, a, like I said, a lot of bundles um, and then resell what I didn't want loose and then put that back into the fund. And that, I don't know if it's still the same now because the market's changed a lot, but back then that felt like a good way of building your collection without spending a fortune. Because if you were to buy a bundle with 20, 30 games, I mean, it's probably astronomical now, but back then it wasn't too bad. 
you get what you want from it, the upgrades or variations, whatever it is you want, and then put the rest back on, maybe individually, depending on what it is that you're listing there. And you could usually offset most of the cost there if what you were originally paid anyway. Yeah, you could I know back a lot there. of people um, do that anyway, I think. Uh, a lot of collectors, they sort of, whether they're upgrading their own um cases or sleeves or manuals whatever and then they'll just shift the other stuff on and, and i would other advice i'd give is just make the effort to get out to any markets that are around i know if you're in people in the uk that you know there's quite a few markets i would nearly always go to the leeds and doncaster markets i mean they, it, both of those are a bit of a mission for me to be honest but i feel like it's a nice day out um, now my son's a bit older he enjoys going with me yeah um, nice so that's that's good even if you don't pick anything up it's just a nice thing to to have a browse through um because you just can't really do it anywhere else now what like we've already discussed other than looking behind the piece of glass in cex <laughs> you know there's not much out there no so i do think we're quite spoiled um, in the uk because master system was so uh popular back in the day um trying to collect for master system in the us for example is almost yeah it's, it's a, a real challenge um but i do think we've got I, I i really like that we've got cex i know the price is you know, sometimes can be a bit fierce, um, but I, I'd rather have it than not. And I think also with all the gaming markets that crop up, there must be there must be over 20 that run a year now, maybe probably more. So I do think we're quite lucky in that regard. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Definitely. So I think that's my advice. And I know it's super cliched, but, you know, people say it's like the friends you meet along the way as well. You know, there's yeah. more to it. It's not just about collecting the games. You meet a lot of people. Um, like we have our annual Sega 8-bit meetup that's been going since 2008 or 9. Since 2008 or 9. It's one or the other. Um, we've only ever missed it. Is it maybe twice over COVID? But it's been yeah. happening every year. Um, various locations. That's been been brilliant like sometimes we only might get six people turn up uh, but it's usually sort of eight to ten i think the one you came to last year was was the, the biggest crowd how many were there was it at 12, 15 or maybe 15, 14, yeah. 15 yeah that was you know really good getting to meet people who you talk to online regularly yeah um, my lad came and even he enjoyed it so <laughs> yeah, yeah spot on so no, getting good. involved in in that kind of thing i think is good as well for yeah anybody starting out um because you can make contacts there and that's another way of building your collection with people you know people around you that you know yeah for sure no that's cool james thank you ever so much for um joining um so guys um that's pretty much the end of the podcast thank you ever so much for listening um for anybody interested uh in having um, you know having a chat with uh, with James uh, or anything, I will put a link in the description below um, to his Instagram account. Do go and check it out. He's got a fantastic collection um, of um, all things um, Sega. Uh, that's Sega Collect if you want to look it up yourself. Um, next time on the podcast, uh, we are going to have Ian Wall. So um, hopefully, uh, if this goes well, uh, we'll get a few people um, join us on that one as well. Um James, thanks ever so much. I really appreciate you joining me, buddy, for the best part of an hour nearly. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Guys, thanks ever so much. If you enjoyed the video uh, and the podcast, then please leave uh, a like and consider subscribing. Um, I do plan on doing a few more of these. Uh, but thank you ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All the best. <laughs>